All right, we're trying something a little different this time because the whole uh, live casting thing just doesn't seem to be working out because the world hates me. I'm going to try just sort of recording this, but also having it on video and then uploading it later. Now, this doesn't give me the benefit of having an audience nearby to throw out some fun little bon mots, but it does give me a little more control over the quality of the video and over the quality of the audio and over the amount of time I can spend with this and also me not trying to focus all of my energy on getting a live stream up and running. Uh, as I go along, I'm going to try to get some more live streams going, but this whole thing is really taking up too much of my time. So instead, enjoy uh, this, seeing me in relatively higher definition and hearing me well, I guess as I always sound, I always sound like that. I use the same device for recording. Uh, if you're watching this on video, uh, just know that if you ever see me looking off to the side like this, uh, that's because I'm accidentally looking at myself in the screen uh, instead of where I should be looking, which is at you, the viewer, because the world is nuts and I can't figure out a better way of doing this until I get better equipment, which I don't know if I want, because why would I pay for that? In any case, let us begin. Do 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 do. This one starts with a uh, with a quote. Go, eat your food with gladness and drink your wine with a joyful heart, for God has already approved what you do. Always be clothed in white and always anoint your head with oil. Enjoy life with your wife, whom you love, all the days of this meaningless life that God has given you under the sun. All your meaningless days. For this is your lot in life and in the toilsome labor under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might, for in the realm of the dead, where you are going, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. Ecclesiastes uh, 9, 7 through 9, 10. <laughs> Welcome back to Deep in Bear Country, a Berenstain Bear cast. I'm your host, Phil Gonzalez, and if you heard that quote right up top, you're like, wow, that was a long one for the beginning of a Berenstain Bears book, to which I will respond. That was not the quote used in the Berenstain Bears book. The Berenstain Bears book uh, used the, only the part about uh, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Uh, that's the only part it used. Uh, I was like, well, what's the full context of that? And then I realized that it that it uh, carried on into the whole thing about the realm of the dead and was like, well, I got to get this whole whole little bit up there because uh, that's too good not to have. And then I looked at the entire like sort of chunk that it was pulled from and thought, this is great. Like, I love that it's a quote about like, look, God already said whatever you're going to do is okay, so go off and do it. Uh, just make sure that you enjoy your life while you got it because life is meaningless. Everything's meaningless. Uh, you're going to go to the land of the dead one day and you're not going to be able to do anything there. Uh, also, just whatever you choose to do, throw your whole heart into it because you're going to be dead and you're going to be in the land of the dead and you can't do anything there. So go for it. God thinks it's great. Go for it. I was like, that's a it's pretty nice philosophy to start off a Baron's Day Bears book with. Uh, that's from Ecclesiastes, one of the books of wisdom, supposedly written by the son of David. Is that what I'm... Am I remembering that correctly? Uh, yes, by the son of, uh, of David, king of Jerusalem, uh, supposedly written by him. And it's a weird little book that's very controversial in the sense that no one really agrees on what the book of Ecclesiastes means. It's got a lot of wisdom, it being a wisdom book. Uh, but... What is the point of it? Some people is like it's a book of skepticism. Like some people said that like maybe the author who the the author his name in Greek is Ecclesiastes, like some form of Ecclesiastes, but it it's all translated from Hebrew into other language. It's it's complicated, but 
So some people were like, well, is it, was Ecclesiastes, was the Ecclesiastes author like going through a crisis of faith? And that's what this whole book is like, sort of like him working through. Who knows? All we do know is that usually when a book of the Bible is attributed to one author, all you have to do is a little digging and you realize that that was just made up. Like if you look at the beginning of this book, it talks about the author in the third person. So there's some clues right off the bat that maybe that's not the full story here. But this chunk... Uh, this is the book that has like the vanity, vanity, all is vanities things like life is meaningless. Like there's a lot of that in the book of Ecclesiastes. But this little chunk that deals with the value of not even the value of hard work. It just tells you that if you're going to do some hard work, just do it really well. Like, please just put, put your back into it. Uh, it's kind of the, the crux of this week's book. Yes, this week's book is from 2010. Again, it's another Living Lights book. And it is the Berenstain Bears. And a job well done. I had to double check the and because last week's book didn't have an and and I kept saying an and and looked at it later and I was like, that doesn't have an and. The Berenstain Bears and a job well done. And it's a value of not only hard work, but sticking to your job and doing it correct, doing it the right way. So what is this book about? And uh, what, what's the point of this one? Well, this is the book about chores Basically, the Berenstain Bears doing chores. Uh, it's a nice spring day. It's time to do some spring cleaning and everyone has their job to do. Even little Honey. Uh, that's right. Honey plays a part in this book and we are the better for it. So uh, everyone has a job to do. Mom is going to get down to beating the dirt out of the rugs. And Pop is going to fix the broken railing leading up the front steps. And brother and sister are going to clean out the old playhouse in the backyard. Now... There's a, there's a picture of the playhouse here. It looks like it's a, 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 a pretty well put together little box of a playhouse. It's got an actual shingled roof that's covered in moss. It's not the it's, you know, it's not the cleanest thing in the world, but that's why they are in the process of cleaning it. And Honey Bear is going to join them and attempt to help them out. So Mama gets to work beating them rugs. I've never beat a rug. I do know that that's a thing that you're supposed to do. You're supposed to take your rugs outside hang them up on a line and hit them as hard as you can. I've never done this. I've never, I'm not a rug user. We've got a couple of like mats in the house that we like set out. Like there's one in the kitchen and there's some mats underneath the cat litter, but we tend to try to keep carpeting out of this house in all forms, not because we don't want soft things under our feet, but because we have cats and we have a child who tends to be destructive even in her advancing years. Uh, so we don't want that. We don't want things that we have. To, we don't want additional things that we have to care for in this house. There's enough to care for, mostly the aforementioned child and uh, our own sanity. So uh, Papa sets sets to work fixing that railing. Carpenter Bear himself, so that we know that Papa is uh, capable of doing that. And the cubs set off towards the playhouse. There's also a shed in the backyard and another like secret, like a secret building. It's like a low building with a slanted roof and like a barred doorway. And I've we, we've dealt with the shed before, like the tool shed. Like we know what goes on in the tool shed. That's tools. But I don't know what goes on in this little building. I don't know what this other little outbuilding is. Like there's the playhouse. There's the tool shed. And then there's the strange building. It's not a chicken coop. I don't know what it is. It's locked up. And uh, there's... There's this philosophy in true crime circles, which is that if there is a if there is a room in the house that you're not allowed in, uh, or if there is an outbuilding that you are not allowed in, if there's a little building on the land that no one is allowed in but that is kept locked, you live with a serial killer. I'm just putting that out there uh, because... I've never seen this building in my life. I do like the drawings here, though. I love the illustrations uh, in this picture. I love just look at the... De There's so much detail put into the garden in front of the house. It's like... Oh, it looks like natural, like, local plant life. I mean, I mean, I guess it looks a little planned, but it's also allowed to run riot a little bit. This is a rambunctious garden. I do appreciate... Uh, the look of Mama's of Mama's garden here. I call it Mama's garden because she's the only one we ever see gardening. Uh, but it's nice. It's nice. This is another uh, Living Lights faith story. So that means that the, the 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 colors are vibrant and the illustrations are rather rather lush. Uh, so Mama goes to work, beating them rugs. Papa goes to work. 
fixing that handrail. I mean, there's not there's not a whole lot of plot in this book. Uh, uh, but Papa's doing a good job. He's using uh, he knelt down to carve a piece of wood in the right shape for the railing. This is a this is a real attention to detail book. I, I like this. I like that you can see you see the railing. You see where it's broken uh, behind Papa. Uh, it's clearly a busted railing. And you see Papa surrounded by his tools. He's using one of those <sighs> scrape him a scrape him a jigs, and he's got one of them one of them cutter devices. He's got some clamps and some glamps and some flamps. And he's it's, there's a real attention to detail here. You know that they, they I don't know if whoever illustrated this knows how to fix a railing, but uh, they definitely did their research. I just really like seeing Papa actually doing some of his woodwork. It's nice. It's uh, it's it's not vague. It is very specific. So the Cubs, the Cubs decide to hit up that playhouse, the playhouse that we've never seen, and it's a mess. Like it's a disgusting mess. Like it might be time to just start from scratch. Like there, this might be unsalvageable. Although, although, uh, if you watch certain things on YouTube like uh, how-to videos, like fix-it videos. It'll start suggesting other videos and then other videos if you click on those videos. And you might find yourself down a, down a YouTube hole that involves watching people uh, clean roofs professionally because you're a 45-year-old man and all of a sudden that kind of thing is interesting to you. Uh, and you watch these videos and you go, I could do that if I had the right equipment. I could I could do that. But if I'd have to buy the right equipment. Uh, but I've seen a couple of videos now of people cleaning roofs that look very much like this. So it's not a lost cause. But you're going to need, you're going to really want to put your elbow grease into that. Probably get yourself a pressure washer, kids. Uh, I don't know if that bucket and mop is going to be doing the job for you. But before they can get started on the inside of the house, they have to freak out because this house is filled with spiders. That's right. This is uh, this is the Berenstain's opportunity to draw hilarious, angry spiders all over the place. This is a... Uh, I'm looking at the club, this playhouse, too. Brother Bear is squatting down. So is Sister. They are squatting down in the entryway. Uh, and then if you look, the ceiling's not much taller than the doorway. So this is not a house that is going to be fun to be in. They must be doing this strictly for Honey Bear. This is not something that Brother Bear or Sister are going to go inside. Like Once it is clean, they're just going to forget about it again. But uh, yeah, the spiders have made a home of it, and the cubs are not too happy. So they decide to work on the outside of the house. So they start a scrubbing and a rubbing, a bubbing and a cubbing all around the house. But then Brother turns the corner, and what does he see when he gets to the other side of the house? Why, it's a Berryville Slugger baseball bat and a baseball, and a glove. And let's take a step back for a second because this is a Berryville Slugger, which means that uh, in Bear World, Bear Country, uh, their version of Louisville is Berryville. So as we all know from the search I am about to do, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, uh who was it named after? Why Louisville, Kentucky was named after King... Uh, I thought this was the case, but I wanted to make sure. King Louis XVI of France. Uh, Louisville has a rich history. It was named for the King Louis XVI of France in appreciation for his assistance during the Revolutionary War. Uh, named for King Louis XVI of France in appreciation of his assistance during the Revolutionary War. I don't know why it repeated that. Uh, Louisville was founded by George Rogers Clark in 1778. Uh, if you're watching this at home, I just squinted because I have my glasses off so that I can avoid reflections from the lights in my glasses, and you just saw me how bad my eyes are. Uh, King Louis uh, the 16th of France, which means... Okay, so Louisville was founded in 1778 in America. Like Our Louisville, 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 our Louisville, Kentucky, founded in 1778. Great. However, we know that the Bear Declaration of Independence was not signed until the late 1790s. Uh, so I don't know if their Louisville 
was connected to to Berryville. I don't know if Berryville is the same as Louisville in their world because was it named after a King Barry? Well, I guess it was King Barry the 16th of France a thing. I don't know. I have a feeling that if King Louis is mentioned in the bear books, they'll find a way to call him Louis. But I don't know. Just, just something to keep in mind. Uh, but they find a, Bar- a Berryville slugger. They find a ball and they find a bat and they find a glove. And they decide to just, you know, decide to just toss the old ball around. I mean, wouldn't you? If you found a ball and a bat and a glove and you were... You know, it's a day full of chores. Seems like a good good idea. Toss the old ball around. So they're bopping the ball, and Honey's sitting with her glove trying to catch, and Mama's finishing up her rugs. Papa finishes up his rail, and he looks up, and he sees Honey sitting there. Not doing anything. Just, you know, enjoying a spring day. So he's all, hmm. He goes over to check it out, and he sees the Cubs playing ball. And he says, you know what? Baseball is a fine springtime activity, but so is spring cleaning. And they say, oh, we're just taking a break. And he's like, well, it's like you took a big break. You've hardly touched the playhouse. There's a lot of spiders in there, though. And he's like, look, I'll chase out the spiders, but you need to get your job done. So he does that. Uh, There's a cute picture of Papa sweeping out the spiders with a broom, lifting up the playhouse. Again, it's a very small playhouse. I don't know who's going to play in this thing. It says, "Uh, the spiders ran off and hid in the storage shed, which is a better home for them anyway. Right, because it's probably filled with bodies. And, uh... And then Papa's like, hey, did you know that uh, the Bible has something to say about working hard and getting the job done? And Brother says, no. And Sister says, what does it say? And Papa says, well, it says finish your outdoor work and get your fields ready. And after that, you can build your house. Which is, I guess, do your outdoor work and then you can build your house. Which I don't understand Like, what the point of that was because... That's from the book. That's from the book of Proverbs, and I guess it has something to do with doing outdoor outdoor work. But the idea behind that seemingly is you have to like. It's kind of the whole like build. It seems to be like kind of how you build a strong foundation before you like build your like put your outdoor work in order and get your fields ready. After that, build your house. Now it's Proverbs, and this is like. Uh, like just further sayings of the wise part of Proverbs. Like they're not even really connected to you. Because right before that is an honest answer is like a kiss on the lips. So that doesn't have anything to do with what Papa was talking about. And then the next one right after put your ha- put your field in order is do not testify against your neighbor without cause. Would you use your lips? To mislead. So two very lip-focused proverbs. And in between those is uh, put your fields together and then you can build a house. They're not building a house. They're cleaning a house. Like, I don't know what that had to do with anything. Get your fields ready. And after that, build your house. So great, Papa. I guess it's not really related. So yeah, his sister even follows it up. She's like, what, did you build a house today? And he's like, well, I built a new railing. And Mama says... It also says in the Bible that God made work for us to do, and there's nothing better than to enjoy your work. And I'm like, okay, Mama, you made work for the kids to do. Like, honestly, like you were like the ones who were like, go, go clean out, clean out that clubhouse you never play in that we built for you. Mama comes walking up. Do you enjoy your work, Mama? Asked brother. And Mama makes a good point here. She says, well, I enjoy my clean rugs. And you will enjoy your clean playhouse. But again, they won't because they won't fit in it. It's a very small playhouse. And sister's like, especially without all those spiders. And honey says, yuck. And they all laugh like it's a sitcom from 1982. And there they are all laughing. And they, they, there's a pretty cute drawing of honey making a yuck face. You heard it here first, folks. I have gone on record as saying there is a cute drawing of honey making a yuck face. Uh, and then uh, that's it. That's the book. They The Cubs clean a clubhouse that they're not going to use because they won't fit in it. Uh, Papa quotes a Bible quote at them that doesn't have anything to do with what they were doing. And sister even points that out. And then mom is like, God told you to work hard. And I like my clean rugs. And that's it. That's your Living Lights book. But wait, there's more. Because we've got activities and questions from brother and sister. Talk about it. 
One, do you have at-home jobs that need to get done before you can have some fun? Such as reading this book, I assume. That's your fun for the day, kids. Do you have outdoor, do you have at-home jobs? Uh, I mean, I do because I own this house with Alana. I don't necessarily always do. I do have regular chores. So my chores that are like kind of just like, this is what I do. Uh, I do the dishes every night if I am not exhausted, but we do go through a lot of dishes and that's my job. I am the dish doer. I do the laundry. That is my job. I am the launderer. Uh, I clean the bathrooms when I remember to. Uh, and then there's just like general chores around the house. Mitzi is supposed to clean the cat litter, but she rarely remembers to. And since the cat litter is in the room with me, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, frequently, it falls on me to do that simply so I can endure being in the room at which I work and record podcasts and talk to you beautiful people uh but that's mitzi's chore in addition to keeping her room clean and then doing like a rotating list of chores every week uh the presumably that she's supposed to do alana does everything else uh name some of the chores you do i just did and how it helps the family when you finish them completely well okay so when i do the dishes frequently i will leave one or two dishes undone because you get to that point where you're just like, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I don't want to do this. I'll frequently not wash the uh, the strainer, the metal like pasta strainer uh, that's been used for dinner because it's a pain in the butt. When you scrub it with a sponge, uh, the, the wire mesh tears at the sponge and crumbles it. And then little bits of sponge get stuck in the strainer that you then have to clean out. Uh, it's also the, the wire is bent. And so there's like little creases in it that are frequently hard to clean. And instead of just doing it, I will sometimes just give up and say, no, I'll clean it later. Uh, and so then the next day someone needs it and it's not clean or I'll avoid cleaning. Like I'll do it, avoiding doing some of the hand washing. Uh, and the next day somebody will need that stuff. And then I will be interrupted and made to go downstairs and clean it. So it does help the family when I do my tour completely. Uh, two. What do you think Papa Bear meant when he said the Bible says finish your outdoor work and get your fields ready after that builds your house? I've just pointed that out. I don't know what Papa meant. I don't understand the point he was trying to make. If I don't understand it, then I have to believe it was uh, not thought out on Papa's part because if nothing else in this world is true, I have to believe that I am at least somewhat smarter than Papa Q Bear, than Junior, okay, than Ernie. I have to believe that I'm a little bit smarter than Ernest Quimby Bear. I, I don't know what the Q stands for. Quietus. I have no idea. Uh, I have to believe I'm smarter than Papa Q Bear. Uh, so if I don't understand what he means, he doesn't understand what he means, which means it doesn't mean anything. Get out and do it. Here's some fun activities you can do that are related to the Berenstain Bears and a job well done. One, design a family chore chart. Okay, that's... Kind of a big ask, but all right. Uh, hang the chart up and check it daily, making sure you are completing your family responsibilities. Now, this ties in with uh, the Berenstain Bears. They've done a chore chart before. And uh, I'll tell you right back. Chore charts, all kinds of charts. Uh, you have to have the mind set to really see, see the chore chart, the chart through. If you're not a look at chart kind of family, uh, the chore chart won't work. We have all kinds of lists and schedules that we stick up on the wall and they work for about a day, two days, and then we forget they're there. We get used to seeing them and they just kind of blend into the background. And then like three weeks later, we'll be like, oh, we forgot to look at the thing. And then we'll look at it. Like it's just right there. And we forgot to look at it. If you are a chart family, make a chore chart. If you're not a chart family, Figure something else out. Uh, two, help someone in your family with one of their given jobs around the house. Do not wait to be asked. Just help do something. If you don't have to do the dishes that day, if you or if you're just not a dish doer in the family, or you don't do the laundry, maybe one day you do it. Maybe one day you just do the dishes instead of me or the person. And then they're like, oh, thank you so much for doing the dishes. I'll probably say like, you didn't do it right because I do the dishes every day. It's my job. And so I know how to do it. Sometimes also I like doing the dishes because it's a little bit of quiet time. Like I can just pop on a podcast and do the dishes. 
And if you're like, let me help, then I'd be like, I just want this. Just give me this 15 minutes of quiet time. In any case, sure, do it. Uh, the do not wait to be asked part is the best part because you kind of have to have the drive yourself then. You, you do that. Don't wait to be asked. Don't expect any kind of thanks or anything in return. And we call that a mitzvah. That's a mitzvah. Uh, do a mitzvah for someone. Uh, chore related. And then it ties into the book. It ties into Ecclesiastes because that's part of the, I think that's part of the, the Tanakh. Is that part of the Tanakh? Old Ecclesiastes. Uh, yes, yes. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's some old writings there, some old writings. Uh, so yeah, it's all tied in with Ecclesiastes. Proverbs too. So we're really Old Testament this week. And, uh, that's fine because this is all about just being a good person. Some rules about being a good person. Do your job. Do your chores, kids. That's 2010's Berenstain Bears. A job well done. They do a good job. Seems like a little bit like, Mike and Jan are asking for a criticism. Like, you call your book a job well done. Maybe the reviewer could be like, is it? It was. It was a job well done. It's a little muddy. I don't quite understand the point Papa's trying to make. Uh, I don't quite understand. Like, it's not an exciting book, but it is super colorful. I like the way they draw the moss and the bubbles. I like the way they draw moss and bubbles. And I like this cover because it has Papa and Mama admiring the Cubs cleaning their clubhouse. And uh, Papa has his arm around Mama's waist. And he's a... He's got a little... He's a little comfortable with Mama. I like that. I like that it shows a married couple that appreciate each other's figures. I don't know what point I'm making. I don't know if I'm actually making the point. It, they're an intimate couple, and I like that Mama and Papa are physically affectionate with each other around the Cubs. That's a, it's a handy thing to be. Uh, Aaron St. Bear's job about that in 2010. Uh, good book. If you like God and books about the things God wants you to do, uh, pick it up. Living Lights, Faith Story. Um, otherwise, give it a pass. But it's not too preachy. Just about do your chores, kids. And finish them when you start. Uh, otherwise, I am Phil Gonzalez. You can find this show at BerenstainBearCast.org. You can find me on Twitter at BerenstainBearCast. Uh, I'll be uploading the video of this. So go to, I mean, you can find it. It'll be posted at the Facebook page. And also on Twitter, I'll, I'll do a link to it. But I'll be uploading it to YouTube. Uh, so it's there. So it's out there. So if you've heard this and you want to hear the same thing, but like see me moving around when I do it, seek it out. It'll be out. Uh, otherwise, take care of yourselves, uh, take care of each other, give big hugs to your mother. I don't know what I was going to say. And I'll see you all next time deep in America.